Hey guys, Krishna Madhav Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the May 2017 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the other solutions for this same paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link to the playlist in the description below. So be sure to check those things out. And with that, let's take a look at the solution. Okay, so let's take a read. So it says a treasurer of Storecraft Cooperative presents the following information for the year ended 31st March 2016. So we have gross profit, all right, honoraria to members, bank fees, fees paid for training of members, then we have interest from investments. Okay, that's, that's an income. And retained profits from last year. Okay, cool. So what they want, using the information above, prepare Storecraft Cooperative's income and expenditure account for the current year end. So I think if we're doing an income and expenditure account, if you didn't know what that was, that's basically an income statement. Uh, just called by a different name and maybe not governed with as many strict accounting standards. Okay, but at, at the start, you need to head up. So Storecraft Cooperative, <laughs> Income and expenditure account for the year ended 31st March 2016. Right, so we have gross profit of 40,000. So we start there. And I like to add my, my additional income before I deduct any expenses. Right, so now we're going to minus expenses. Now, the thing is the retained profits from last year, that does not go in the income and expenditure account as far as I know. Right, again, like I said, if anybody has information that could dispute that and you want to let me know, right, let me know and I'll pin your comment and we'll, we'll do some research on it, okay? But this is from, from what I currently know. And again, I'm finding out that some of that stuff has changed. So I'm very much, again, open to changing and learning. All right, so we have bank fees. So yeah, so we have bank fees and fees paid for training of members. And oh yeah, the honorary to members, right? So that, that's almost like directors. If you guys know like limited liability companies, we have something called director's remuneration. That's basically what that is, but from a cooperative perspective. All right, so we have that there and we have a total for an expense, a subtotal, and we're gonna take that from the income and we're gonna get surplus of income over expenditure. So again, um, if you guys are not familiar with the terminology used with this topic, you can take a look now, right? I don't yet have a video on cooperatives. When I do, I'm gonna put a link up there, All right? If there's no link, message me and remind me to do that video, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next part of the question. So it says the treasurer of Storecraft Cooperative knows that the Cooperative Act requires that 25% of profits must be transferred to a reserve funds account. The Cooperative by law requires that 20% of profits after such transfer be shown as retain, retain profits and all other profits are paid out as dividends to members. So based on the above requirements, prepare Storecraft Inco Cooperative's income appropriation account for the current year. Okay, so let's scroll down here as well. So we can take a look at the solution. So don't forget, please, head up, right? Storecraft Cooperative, income appropriation account for the year ended 31st March 2016, dollar signs. So we're going to bring on the same surplus of income over expenditure from above, right? Now, the Cooperative Act requires that 25% of such profits be transferred to a reserve funds account. Okay, so less distributions and transfers, transfer to reserve. Now, I rounded this off. Right, this number is not perfectly divisible by four. You're gonna get something at maybe 25 cents or 75 cents. Um, so I rounded it off to 93.78. Right, now that leaves that much. Um, now 20% 20, 20 of the profits after such transfer are shown as retained earnings, which means the remaining 80% of that figure is paid out as dividends. Right, so we pay dividends first. That leaves us with 56.27, which you could double check as 20%. And don't forget, we add the retained earnings from the previous year giving us retained profits carried forward. Now, again, before I learned a bit more about cooperatives, I used to add my retained profits on top here before I made my transfers and distributions. But in discussion with other teachers and students, they have been um, putting the retained profits brought forward at the end here. And I understand their logic. You want to show appropriations out of the current year's surplus, right? Um, to show the, the earning capacity or earnings ability of the entity for the current year. You don't want to keep relying on previous year's profits, right? But I have encountered other questions in past papers where they wanted to add the retained the retain profits brought forward to the current year's surplus in order to do your appropriations, right? Um, so, so yeah, again, if anybody has uh, a link to a good, uh, what you call it, source material on cooperatives, I'm very much open. You can link me in the description below and I'll take a look at it and hopefully that will help me make my cooperatives video. Cool. Okay, let's um, just do a quick pause. I'm going to rearrange my screen and we're going to take the last part of the question. Right, so it says here that Storecraft Cooperative 
owns a small hotel consisting of 10 guest rooms called Crusoe Getaway. The cooperative employs a front desk manager, a housekeeper, and a cook. Each employee is paid using a different payment method. The following information is presented to you. So S. Vestiger, Vestiger, S. S. Vesti, right. She's the, he or she is the front desk manager and is paid 3900 per month. L. Patigau is, is a housekeeper and paid 20 per guest room per day. Okay. P. Adams, cook, 15, or 15 per hour, double time for hours worked over 160 hours per month. Now, part one asks you to give the proper names of any two of the payment methods that may be used by Storecraft. Okay. So, um, S. Vestiger, or Vestigia, not sure what name that is, is earning 1300 per month. So, that, that is a monthly salary. Right? So, I didn't put it in my solution. I'm, I'm calling it out here. So, jot it down if you need to. Okay? Monthly salary. El Patego, $20 per room per day. That is piece rate. So, he or she is paid for every room he or she cleans or prepares or keeps, right? And then finally, P. Adams is paid 15 per hour. That's an hourly, hourly rate or hourly wage, all right? Um, and also overtime, right? Okay, so that was two marks, a mark for each method. If we scroll down a bit more. So during March 2016, the payroll information was extracted and is shown below. So we have statutory deductions, right? National insurance and pension plan. So each person is, well, 5% is national insurance deduction, 3% is pension plan. Income tax after all statutory deductions, 10%. And voluntary deductions, so S. Vestiger has, or Vestigia, 200 for credit union, and Patigal has 300 for bank loan. So using all the information given, complete the form on page 25. You are to round off numbers that are less than a dollar and be sure to show you're working nine marks. And just so you know, that's the end of question five. Okay, so I prepared a format below. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at one person at a time. So L. Vestiger is paid for one month, right? So we know from the information above, right, that L. Vestiger's monthly salary is 3900 So what... Pfft, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to deal with the deduction. So let's take a look. So we have the columns gross pay, right? National insurance. So this is the format they gave you on the paper, but they did it in a, a kind of landscape format. So I'm not going to rearrange my screen just to rearrange it back to show you that, right? I recreated it here, right? So there's a column for national insurance, right? So these are, right, 5%, 5% deductions. Pension plan is 3%, income tax is 10%. Then I put voluntary deductions and then net pay. So your net pay is your pay after you've made all of these deductions. So let's start off with S. Vestiger, 3900 for the gross pay. National insurance is 5% of that. Pension is 3% of 3900 And your income tax is 10% after, again, after statutory deductions have been made. So they didn't give you a column to show that working, but you're going to take 3900 and subtract both 195 and 17, and 117, sorry. And then you're going to find 10% of that. Now that's going to give us a figure which is going to have to be rounded off, right? And the voluntary deduction for S. Vestiger, Vestiger, right, is 200, right? And the net pay is going to be 3,900 minus these four items here, which is going to give us 3,029. All right. So let me just scroll down so we can take a look at Patigau. Okay, so it says Patigau. 20 guest rooms worked for 20 days work for all guest rooms and if we take a look back up here we are told storecraft owns a small hotel consisting of 10 guest rooms so if you take a look at my table i have some working so 20 per guest room per day by 10 guest rooms because it says 20 days work for all rooms eh? so 20 dollars per room per so 20 by 10 by 20 days so the gross pay for vestiga is forty thousand. So we're going to start there. So sorry, give me forty. Four thousand. Sorry, my apologies. So four thousand. Five percent of four thousand is two hundred. Three percent is one twenty. Two hundred and one twenty is three twenty. Three hundred and four hundred is thirty six eighty. Ten percent of it is three sixty eight. And then voluntary deduction is three hundred. So you're going to add up all these deductions and subtract it from four thousand, giving us net pay of three thousand and twelve. Cool. Let's scroll on to see P. Adams. Right, so P. Adams worked 172 hours. Now, what was the information regarding P. Adams? All right, so P. Adams, 15 per hour and double time for hours worked over 160 hours per month. 
So, if P. Adams worked 172, that means he or she worked an excess of 12 hours over 160. And that means he or she earns double time. And double 15 is 30. So, if we break, it up, if we break up the 172 into regular pay, see in regular pay, 15 per hour, right, by 160. You get $15 per hour up to and including 160 hours. So, that's 2400 and then, and then double time, so 15 by 2 for the excess over the 160, which is 12 hours, 172 minus 160. So that's 360 for a total gross pay of 2,760. So let's start populating the fields here. 2,765% is 138. 3% is 83. So you add those together and subtract it from 2,760, and then find 10%, which will give us income tax of 254. No voluntary deductions. So your net pay is 27.60 minus some of these three items here. And you get 22.85. Okay, so ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out more videos, I'm going to put cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know every time I release a video. Be sure to check out my website for free POA handouts and check out the link in the description below for free possible solutions. Again, thanks so much for watching. Stay well and I'll see you next time. Bye.